Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is Host Client, uh, the Manage section of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. So we're logging in directly to the host client here. Um, this is hitting the ESXi server directly on its own IP address, not going through vCenter server. This is how you manage an individual host. Let's get rid of that welcome message. And we're going to dive um, directly into the manage section. So I'm on host on the left hand side of manage and we'll start with the advanced settings. So anytime you need to do any advanced configuration, this would be the place that you would edit any of that configuration. Um, it's currently got something in the search box on the right for USB, so it's just filtering settings that currently have USB as part of them. I could type in something else, I could type in max for maximum. I could maybe type in something like CPU dot for anything to do with CPU related. Then maybe back to USB again, just to show you that you can filter these things. And if I click on one and then click edit, I can change the value assigned to that particular entry. So that's just a quick way of looking through all these um, advanced settings. I think auto start, which tells the host to automatically start some of these virtual machines as soon as it's powered on or booted. As you can see, I've only got two virtual machines on this at present, a folding at home appliance and a vCenter server. If I have a look at those settings, I can have auto start enabled, yes or no. I can have a delay for starting new virtual machines, so it waits this long before it starts the next one and the next one. I have a stop delay, so this is the gap between shutting down them. And you can see that I've changed my shutdown action, my stop action to be shut down because the default is normally power off, which is an unclean shutdown. So I always change this to shut down. And there's an option here to use a heartbeat, which listens for the VMware tool's heartbeat. And if it hears something start or stop, it can ignore that start and stop delay and use an actual um, confirmation that something has stopped and started rather than just guessing at the amount of time to, to give it. You can see here that if I select a virtual machine, um, I can again use an enable or a disable. I can change the order. I can move it up or down. And if you have a look on the right hand side, you'll see that that's where these settings are actually being changed on the um, auto start order, the start delay and the stop delay. So I click on them and click on the buttons above to do earlier, um, later, enable, disable. So by default, when you boot a host, it will start or uh, it will start machines in this order using these timings, and when you shut it down, it will use these um, this order and these timings. So swap files, virtual machines still have swap files. The settings are here under edit settings. Swap is enabled. Um, you can pick a data store for running all swap, but the default is to leave it with the virtual machine itself, but you could dedicate a specific drive for swap. Might be a good idea because you wouldn't need to back it up. It'd be one drive that didn't contain uh, swap files or important data. Local swap is enabled and host cache is enabled. So the, again, these are global settings for all virtual machines. And then I've got settings here for NTP, Network Time Protocol, and then Precision Time Protocol. So my NTP settings have the current date, the service is running, and I have a list of NTP servers that I want to communicate with. I always use IP addresses just in case DNS is down, but you just it's just a comma separated list of um, time servers, and it's set to start and stop with the host. So instead of that NTP time service, you also have an option of precision time protocol. Um, unfortunately, it's one or the other, so you can only use one of them. Um, in high frequency trading or maybe financial institutions, you might want things like precision time control or maybe scientific, but certainly for a home lab, just you know, having the, the correct day and the correct minute is, is usually enough. On PCI devices, you can see everything on the PCI bus on this host. So a list of all the devices that the PCI bus has enumerated. And if I just show you here, I've got um, a Quadro K2000 currently in this box, which on the right hand side is shown as active. You can see the, the ticks on the left and the active status on the right. So, um, and a button up at the top that says toggle pass through. So this is where you allow a device to be passed through to a virtual machine or not. Be careful if you choose this for a storage array because I have seen people uh, disconnect the storage from within the server in an attempt to give it to a virtual machine. Power management, 
um, on power management, we can it's using ACPI, and I've currently got it on balanced. Um, in a production environment, you'd normally have it on high performance. In a home lab, you'd normally have it on low power. But I picked balanced because I'm running some folding at home appliances. If you dare to click the custom settings, these are quite frightening. Don't understand any of these, um, but you can tweak it if you really want to. Most people will just uh, use one of the standard ones, I think. So again, high performance in an enterprise uh, and balanced or low power, probably in a home lab. In the licensing tab, you can see I'm currently in evaluation mode. I have no key um, and I can't change anything because it's connected to a vCenter server. It lists all the features. The interesting one at the bottom, if we just scroll down this list, is workload management. This is what we call Project Pacific or VMware Tanzu. This is the Kubernetes um, capability that uh, comes with vSphere now in vSphere 7. I can also have a look at different packages and different VIBs that are installed. So usually these are for features or drivers. So I may just pick one here at random. So that's the Broadcom driver for NVMe fiber channel. Emulex SCSI driver. If I want to add one again, I can uh, install one using that update feature. In services, you can see all the services that are running on the box, and you'll notice here SSH and the ESXi shell are running. That was the thing that I got a warning about previously. So I can start it and stop it manually, or I can have a policy um, that applies all the time. So um, a policy that applies every time you start and stop, or an ability just to temporarily start it and stop it. So that's the ESXi shell and the SSH. They were the things that you saw a warning about before. I've got those enabled because I use SSH and SCP to copy uh, patches and updates to the box. Um, and you can pick which kinds of updates can be installed. So partner accredited ones, VMware certified, VMware accepted, or any. Um, most people will never change this from the partner setting. If you want, you can do authentication through Active Directory. Uh, there's an option here to pick a domain name and username and credentials, and then you can now log on to the box using pass-through authentication on a Windows domain. Um, certificates in this instance are managed directly by the vCenter server because it's, that's where it's connected. If it was separate, I could manage them individually. I could add a, a local user if I wanted, and those local users can be assigned permissions. So. We've got options here of things like administrative permissions or read-only permissions. And we've also got um, lockdown mode. So um, it's possible, um, but you do need to be careful with this. It's possible to enforce uh, lockdown mode, which is more disabled by default, but you can make sure that this can only be accessed by vCenter server. Ticking that box would would disallow us from being able to log in through the web interface like we've done. Well, there's another option which is vCenter server and the direct console user interface, but ticking any of those boxes other than disabled will prevent us from logging in through the host client. So it's for improved security, but you could find yourself locked out if you set that in error. So this was the host client manage um, part of the vSphere 7 home lab series. Thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful.